What is chronic fatigue syndrome? Well, this condition, also known as myalgic encephalomyelitis, is unknown by most doctors and the general public. It is a devastating multi-system disease that causes dysfunction of the neurological, immune, endocrine, and energy metabolism systems. Individuals who have CFS experience extreme fatigue that doesn't improve after long periods of rest. Stamina for physical and mental health begin to degrade, and these activities can make this fatigue worse. Some symptoms of CFS are fatigue, loss of memory or, or concentration, headaches, and e extreme exhaustion. It is estimated that more than 2 million Americans have CFS and it is seen more frequently in women than in men. The diagnosis is tricky as it is only diagnosed once similar diseases and conditions have been excluded. This can take time and may result in using treatments that are trying to cure something an individual with CFS is actually not diagnosed with. Also, lack of awareness of this disease from both patients and doctors can slow down the diagnosing process. Let's look at Hannah. She has been diagnosed for two years. Before she knew she had CFS, she visited multiple doctors who misdiagnosed her with other diseases such as depression and mono. Additionally, she was often told that her symptoms weren't real and would eventually go away. After she persisted, she was finally diagnosed correctly. This diagnosis gave her little relief because she was curious as to how or why she developed this condition. At the moment, it is not conclusive as to what causes CFS. Some cases have shown that there may be a dysfunction of the immune system or the adrenal system, a genetic undertone, or connection to early childhood trauma. CFS sometimes develops after someone has been sick with a viral infection, which can result in immunological and neurological dysfunction. In a study by LaRusso et al., it was found that individuals with CFS have a higher number of pro-inflammatory cytokines, which result in fatigue, flu-like symptoms, and an increase in natural killer cells. Additionally, more evidence has been shown with defective immune systems, as those with CFS have a reduced response of T-cells and the presence of autoantibodies. Hannah found that over time, she was able to do less and less. In the beginning, she constantly felt tired and was having difficulty concentrating on small tasks. After a couple years had passed, she was using mobility aids to travel around and found herself resting more and more. Tasks that most people would find simple, such as making dinner, would make her so tired that she would have to rest for hours after. This condition is one that progresses differently in everyone. In cases that are very severe, even a conversation can lead to the inv individual feeling completely exhausted for hours or days. The New Yorker newspaper stated that people with CFS are more functionally impaired than those with type 2 diabetes, multiple sclerosis, and congestive heart failure. The rate of unemployment is estimated at between 35 and 60 percent, and up to 29 percent of them will at some point be bedridden or housebound because of their illness, which frequently strikes people in their 40s or 50s. Hannah wanted to know more about treatment, so she looked online. She stumbled upon a research trial published in 2011 by White et al. called the PACE study that looked at using cognitive behavioral therapy and graded exercise therapy as forms of treatment. The PACE trial concluded that those who received CBT improved by 59% and those who did graded exercise improved by 61%. Hannah decided she would start to do graded exercise herself, but after a while she started to gradually feel worse and lost more of her energy capacity. She decided to review the study again and found articles claiming that the study made false claims. Those studies found that only 20% of those who used CBT as a form of treatment and 21% of those who used graded exercise improved. The PACE researchers had changed the definition of recovery from their original in their proposal, making it easier to achieve. As well, the data collection was based on self-reporting, which is subject to participant reporting biases. Hannah was shocked at these findings and upset that the exercise she had been doing was actually making her condition worse. In terms of a specific treatment for CFS, there is currently no cure. The focus is on symptom relief. For medications, as there are many cases with individuals having CFS who also have depression, the treatment sometimes involves taking antidepressant medication to help relieve the symptoms of depression. In turn, treating the symptoms of depression, if one is experiencing that, them, can help the individual to cope better with the CFS symptoms. 
As well, the individual should look at the daily activities they do and determine which ones they find most draining and see if there are any alternative methods of doing these activities to minimize the amount of energy they expend on them. Having such a debilitating condition with no sufficient and even falsely claimed research is extremely difficult. For these reasons, doctors and scientists must further research on treatments and causes for CFS. As well, this condition illuminates the importance of research that is fact-based and supported by real data found from unbiased trials. Hopefully, more awareness will inform individuals still following the PACE studies treatments such as graded exercise and CBT and let these individuals know that these treatments are not backed by legitimate research and should not be followed.